I'm, I'm also uh, very, very pleased that uh, we are resuming the face-to-face -face dialogue in the Year of the Dragon. And I take the opportunity to wish you, dear State Councillor, and also all the people of China, a very happy and prosperous Year of the Dragon. Uh, our meeting today is a direct outcome of the EU-China summit that took place in Beijing in December last year, and both the EU and China agreed to enhance mutual understanding, trust, and our meeting today, I believe, is a tangible outcome of this aspiration. Despite our different political economic systems, the EU and China have a shared interest in pursuing constructive and stable relations anchored in respect for the rules-based order, balanced engagement, and also reciprocity. From our perspective, there is a need for an open exchange and leaving space for a more ambitious partnership. So our high-level people-to-people dialogue aims, as you rightly said, Madam State Councillor, to take stock of this EU-China cooperation, working together on a people-to-people -people basis. It is now 12 years since our first meeting, and this dialogue has proved to be an excellent forum to exchange knowledge, practices, experiences, especially in the areas where the EU and China face common challenges. And today we have agreed to dedicate this dialogue to a constructive discussion on how we can work together for a greener and more sustainable future. In the policy areas covered by, by the dialogue in mobility, in education, gender equality, youth, culture and sport. And we have a common interest in, in building greener and more sustainable societies. And we have a common responsibility also. And this is even more important under the current geopolitical context. It has never been more crucial to reach out across borders, creating links between individuals and organizations in Europe and in China. And this priority to build bridges is at the heart of the European project, and that is clear in all our policies and, and programs. We will not succeed in the transition towards a greener society without education. We talked about that earlier, without providing opportunities for our people to develop greater knowledge and competences. And we need to look at the role our education systems play. For me, it is also very important uh, to look at the role that balanced student mobility can play to equip our young generations for a better world of tomorrow. We remain very committed to the promotion of academic freedom, open scholarly exchange, inclusion and participation of all interested civil society institutions and, and think tanks as well. Gender equality is also another important topic which will be covered today, and it is inseparable from sustainable development. It forms the basis of an explicit sustainable development goal and is also mainstreamed in all others. Youth, also very important, most active and dynamic force of our societies, and they are at the forefront of tackling climate change, want to be also involved in steering the green transition, Young people have lots of valuable ideas, energy and will to finding creative solutions and empowering those young generations is really crucial for bringing positive change and combating climate change. So we, make, we need to make sure that their voices are heard. Also at the same time, the role of culture cannot be overstated. There is a lot to share on the role the culture can play in shaping societies and connecting them so that we can understand each other better. And it is our role to ensure that there is space, both in the European Union and in China, for cultural actors. Sport, last but not least, uh, we also need to, to look at the role that sport plays. And uh, in the European Union, there is a growing recognition that sports needs to be part of the solution when it comes to meeting the objectives of, of uh, the green transition. We need to ensure that main uh, sport events like the Olympic Games that will happen soon in Paris are organized also in a way that is environmentally friendly and also uh, socially responsible. 
Overall, I really very much welcome the resumption of the people-to-people -people exchanges between Europe and China after the lifting of the COVID measures. And uh, I believe we can even further facilitate those exchanges. Uh, since the late 1970s, China has opened its doors to scholarly exchange. We saw a wonderful exhibition just now of three excellent examples of this cooperation. And these exchanges have been extremely beneficial for China and the EU. They have deepened our understanding and they have central role for improving the social, economic and political ties. It is also crucial that researchers and civil society institutions can play fully their role, their key role in contributing to the EU-China people-to-people exchanges. Similarly, also, it is important that our diplomats uh, can also engage with universities, that our scholars can also mutually organize visits and contribute greatly to this mutually beneficial relationships. As I mentioned, think tanks, I believe they're also important channel of dialogue, and uh, we are very much uh, welcoming uh, Chinese think tanks, such as the China Academy of Social Sciences, the Shanghai Institutes for International Studies, and uh, we hope similarly that would be also for, for our think tanks. I'm really looking forward for our discussions today, and I'm certain that they will deepen our understanding of how to work together for a more sustainable future. See you, Yu Yu, Gowei, Jisiu, Hezuo, Xie Xie, Dajia.